Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I have another learning fabric with Tomcat Stitchery video for you. Um, so I've been doing this uh, series and I've been uh, just doing kind of a um, fiber basically um, each month since May. I think I started with linen, I did active wear fi fabric last month in June, and then for July we're going to tackle another summer fabric and that is rayon um, and kind of the rayon family. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's talk a little bit about rayon. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the uh, just, or the, in the comment section. Oh, good gracious. <laughs> if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. Um, I try and be very good about um, answering all of those comments um, in a timely manner. So definitely leave any questions you have down below. So let's talk a little bit about rayon. What is rayon? Rayon, at its essence, um, was actually created in the... Um, late 1800s actually and it was built as artificial silk. So um, rayon is a cellulose product, so wood pulp basically at its basic level that has been gone through a man-made um, or a man, man-made? Man, a processed, processed by man <laughs> to create, because um, obviously you can't turn wood pulp, you can't weave wood pulp. So it has to go through a chemical process to then become what we know as rayon. Um, I will say that there are a lot of, um, oh, definitely with the, with, in the world that we're living in today where everyone is very conscious of following the um, line of production back for clothes and everything that we use, any consumables, which is, I think, fantastic. Um, I think it's a very important thing to know. Um, there is definitely rayons that are produced and unethically, unethically. Um, so that is definitely something you do want to look out for because it is a chemical process. And this is not just for your, your technical things that are billed as rayon or viscose. Rayon and viscose can be uh, used interchangeably. They're basically, they're the same thing. Um, they're just two different words, um, I think, just where you are in the world. Um, but you'll see those two words used pretty interchangeably. Um, but it can be both um, harmful to the environment and also um, I know that there um, are instances where, you know, child labor is used in certain parts of the world. So definitely you want to look for, um, you know, rayons and try to follow that back as best as you can that are produced um, a little bit more ethically. I mean, it is a chemical process, um, but something that is, you know, to be conscious of that, I guess. <laughs> so that is rayon at its base basis. Now, things that go through a very similar process, but that start with a different um, fiber. So rayon, like I said, was a, a wood pulp, basically. It's a cellulose product. You will also see modal, tinsel, bamboo, all of those the same thing. Um, they've gone through the same process. Obviously, bamboo is a ban the bamboo plant that has gone through the similar process. Um, and I think the same, I think tinsel is a different um, starting process a cellulose product as well. All of those though are basically your same, very similar, um, they are types of rayons, for lack of a better term. <laughs> so anytime you see those words, um, the tinsel, modal, uh, viscose, rayon, bamboo, I'm trying to think of what are the, some other popular ones. Those are kind of the big ones. Um, just know that those are natural fibers that have gone through a chemical process to turn them into a wearable fabric. Um, that being said, rayon is extremely comfortable to wear. Now, I had some comments, I was talking about rayon not that long ago, of it being not comfortable to wear in hot environments, and that should not be the case. You may want to check and see, you know, rayon can definitely get mixed with other um, fibers like a polyester or nylon or, um, uh, well, spandex, but spandex doesn't do the same as like a nylon, nylon or rayon. Um, even actually acetate, acetate is uh, rayon that has been mixed with acetate <laughs> um, to create that fiber. So acetate has a little bit of naturalness to it. Um, nylon does not. Nylon's completely man-made. Polyester's completely man-made, completely chemical process. But um, it shouldn't be. It should actually be very breathable, very comfortable to wear. Um, it, it has kind of natural wicking because it does come from natural products. Um, it wrinkles, <laughs> just so you know, um, and it doesn't wrinkle like linen. Linen does a nice rumple. I mean, linen can definitely crease. We all know that. You sit for a while, linen stand up. You can't have creases, but linen does a nice rumple. And oh, I forgot to wear my wedding ring. Oh, don't let the rumors fly. I just forgot to put that on this morning. <laughs> um, it does like a nice rumple and that kind of thing. Linen 
can very easily wrinkle all sorts of it. The bamboo, your tinsel, your modal, uh, viscose, all of it can definitely wrinkle. Um, so be mindful of that. Also rayon shrinks. So my care for rayon, I always, even the fancy stuff, like the, I think the rifle paper company, uh, rayon says to dry clean only. I wash all of my rayon um, when I first get it in, um, well, cold water. I just do cold water for everything. I never use anything but cold water, so I don't run the risk of that. But then my rayon goes straight into a hot dryer um, for one round. Because when I have my items made up, I don't dry my rayon items in the dryer. But just in case, number one, one were to get in there, um, it wouldn't be completely ruined. But number two, there's so much shrink in rayon, I highly recommend you heat shrinking that up as, as much as possible um, when you first get your yardage, it will be fine. And a once, you know, definitely going forward, you don't want to dry it all the time. Rayon, the colors can fade in rayon um, over time, both from sunlight and from artificial light and also just from being dried a lot. So I tend to just keep my, um, let my items uh, air dry once they've been made up. Occasionally I'll throw things into the, just like I do with my linen, after it has dried, I'll maybe throw it into the um, dryer just for like a minute or two, just to release some of those wrinkles. And that's usually, that will do it for, um, you know, sometimes I'll put in a damp washcloth in there with it just to create a little bit of steam and that usually whoop, pulls things out. Also rayon reacts fantastically to steam. So if you have a steamer and you don't want to iron things, it's <laughs> it reacts really, really well to steam. Um, that will just kind of drop right out. So um, that's kind of the care of rayon. And yeah, that's that's how I put everything in the in the washing machine pretty much, unless it's a super, super delicate silk something or something that has a lot of light, like a blazer or something or a coat. I wouldn't put that in the washing machine because of all of the built-in um, interfacings and that kind of stuff. But I put pretty much everything into the washing machine. It's just easier for me. Um, I don't wash wool. Wool I do take to the dry cleaner. <laughs> But then it gets stuck in a bag forever because I don't go to the dry cleaner that often. So anyway, um, so let's talk about different types of rayon and maybe some patterns you might want to use. One of the big things with rayon is that it is much, so it's called artificial silk is what it was billed at when it was first created. I think I looked it up. I think it's like 1892 is when it first came out onto the market. Um, but it was billed as artificial silk. So silk, very hard to get, especially back then. Uh, it had to come from um, the east, the far east. Uh, in order because that's where the silkworms were um, but this was kind of a, a way to get that same feel without um, yeah having to go through finding the silkworms and, and all that kind of thing so rayon is extremely heavy so if you were to pick up a um, folded two meters or two yards let's say of um, cotton poplin, for instance, let's use that. So like a, maybe not necessarily a quilting cotton, but something, you know, a little bit thicker, like a cotton, like a Liberty cotton poplin, for instance. And then you were to have, you know, two yards or two meters of a rayon poplin in your other hand, it would be much heavier than the cotton, just because the fiber in and of itself is heavy. Now, what does that mean? That means that rayon has gorgeous drape because of the weight of it it usually drapes across the body beautifully and that's also why a lot of times you'll see rayon made into lighter weight fabrics like your chalet is a very popular one for rayon um you'll see a lot of rayon poplin i actually really love rayon poplin um even their jerseys that you'll see the the knits will usually be a thinner jersey although and we'll talk about ponties a little bit in just a second which are a heavier weight knit but um because it is so heavy a lot of times it is made into not always but it is a lot of times made into just um lighter weight fabrics but the drape on rayons is just gorgeous because of that weight now also because of that weight um rayon can grow <laughs> Now, I have definitely noticed this in um, rayon crepes. So a crepe fabric is the way a fiber is woven. So you can have silk crepes, you can have wool crepes, you can have rayon crepes. Um, and it's just, it's a twist, the way that the, the fabric has been woven. And um, usually that gives just a little bit of mechanical stretch into that fabric, just by the nature of the way that the fiber was woven. So a rayon crepe, for instance, can grow. I mean, it will, it will, you know, get out of shape super easily, like around necklines, but just like the length vertically. <laughs> if you wear that for a long time, you'll notice that it will grow. Um, 
You also, because of that, if you are hemming rayon and you're gonna take a sizable chunk off, this is like silk chiffon, or <laughs> you wanna do it in small chunks because the weight brings so much of it down. If you cut too much off thinking, oh, I need to take three inches off this hem or whatever, and you do, that weight that's been taken off will cause the fabric to jump just a little bit, which means it will get shorter more than the three inches because the weight's been taken off. Um, silk chiffon's the same way, just little. <laughs> that's from working in a bridal workroom for a while. <laughs> that will happen. You want to take that off little by little um, because it will jump. Um, but the same with like a lot of the crepes. So you just do want, do want to be wary of that. Also the same with knits. So I will have a um, like a rayon knit or bamboo um, knit is a beautiful knit to work with. But a lot of times the hems of those t-shirts will grow so much um, that I almost always will have to go in, you know, after a few wears or even like, you know, a couple months or whatever and have to take off a lot. Um, I have a, I made a couple or quite a few lark tees, which is a grain line um, t-shirt pattern um, a few years ago. And I had made some in a cotton knit and some in a bamboo um, and then a few in a rayon. Now the rayon, the regular rayon did not um, stretch out as badly, but my bamboo ones were like six inches longer than the cotton ones that came out. So it will definitely grow over time. You just need to be aware of that. I mean, it's as simple as going back in and rehemming things little by little so that it doesn't jump up on you. Um, but yeah, just to be um, aware that that can be an issue. However, they are gorgeous fabrics to wear, like I said. So let's talk about some of the ways that rayon is woven and some of the ways that you may see that um, in things. Okay, so right here I have a rayon knit, this gorgeous rayon knit. Um, I bought this from Emma One Sock forever ago with the thought that it was going to be pajamas and a robe. So I think I have like seven yards of this. I have a ton of it. It still needs to become pajamas. Um, I think I may make my daughter and I each some Luna loungewear sets from um, Love Notions patterns, some of the, night, the summer nightgown. Um, like I mentioned, it is um, a thinner fabric. It's a, it's a it's a single jersey, uh, this is. Now, this one is not as heavy as some, but again, it's also a very um, a lightweight knit. Now, also with rayon jerseys, because of the nature of it, sometimes some rayon jerseys can be kind of, a, have a little bit of a sheen to them. Bamboo especially can kind of get that way. And you can kind of, and they feel um, not wet, but they, <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain, but they feel kind of shiny, if that makes a sense. Um, and then you have other rayons that feel a little drier. And I'm sure it's just the way that things are woven. I prefer the ones that are a little bit drier. Emma One Sock actually has a whole line of 11 ounce rayon jerseys that are absolutely gorgeous. They are top notch. Now they run like $19 a yard, but, um, you know, some, she has a lot of 15% off sales that usually is on everything. And she just carries a whole bunch of colors, uh, the solid of their rayon knits. Um, they're just, they're gorgeous to work with and they're a little bit drier, um, which got more matte, if that makes sense. Um, not that rayon jersey is shiny necessarily, but they're just a little more matte than your typical rayons. Um, so, you know, especially with any kind of man, well, any fiber really, not all are created equal. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about some rayon jerseys, but this is a rayon jersey. It's a single jersey. Um, it's been printed just on the one side, so it's white on one side with the print on the other side. Uh, it's gonna be perfect for nightwear and maybe even a matching robe. Uh, like I said, I have seven yards of this so we can make a lot of things um, out of it, but it's perfect for nightwear because rayon is cool. If you have 100% rayon or a rayon spandex, it's gonna be cool. Um, so I'm not sure what some of the people that were having issues with that, it should it should be a nice, cool fabric to wear. Bamboo also is an extremely comfortable fabric to wear, um, especially sleeping if you have issues with getting sweaty at night. <laughs> I know it's just part of the part of the process, right? But uh, but yeah, you can just tell how, how nice and drapey that is, especially compared to um, you know, like a cotton spandex. Now I've mentioned before that cotton spandex is actually my preferred for most t-shirts because a rayon jersey makes a beautiful draped t-shirt. And if that is what you are wanting, that is fantastic. If you're gonna do anything with a cowl neck, yes, you want a nice rayon jersey. Um, I just prefer my, just because of my body type, um, I just like things to be to hold their shape, especially around my bust, just to keep things looking as minimal as possible on my upper body. Now, that being said, I do love rayon jersey and I do wear it. I love it in a nice wrap dress, um, just because of the, the draping. Like it's just, 
perfect for anything that needs a little bit of draping. Uh, and I, I definitely made rayon t-shirts before. If that's kind of, you know, going for the slouchier or more relaxed t-shirt look. Um, I love the lark tees that I made. Um, it's just over time, I just noticed that they kind of, they just weren't as flattering on me as a cotton spandex jersey t-shirt is on me. So, yeah, it's just about finding about what you like for your body and what kind of your style is. But that's definitely something to, um, to think about. Also, when buying rayon jerseys, buy from people that you trust. <laughs> you know, this is a lot, um, you know, buying stuff online, it's hard with quality. Um, but if you buy from some reputable online fabric stores, and sometimes that takes a little bit of figuring out, usually that means you're paying a little bit more for it. But if you buy from trusted um, online fabric stores, you know that those all those fabrics have been vetted because they have gone through the samples of those and made sure, you know, selected those, curated all of those. Um, I, you know, I've mentioned I've mentioned my favorite um, fabric online fabric stores many times, but um, this came from Emma One Sock. She has a fantastic collection. Um, it's a little bit pricier, but man, it's really nice. Um, I've never ordered from Marcy Tilton, but I know that a lot of people have said she's got really good stuff as well. Blackbird Fabrics always has lovely um, rayon bamboo knits. Um, Style Maker Fabrics has some lovely ones. Um, Stone Mountain. I mean, there's a whole bunch. Um, but yeah, just find, find a nice, um, you know, and some of the discount fabric outlets, you know, I mean, I don't want to like call anyone out, but some of the ones that where you can find usually like really good deals where you're getting some rayon for, um, you know, $3, $4 a yard, you can totally come away with nice rayon. I'm not, you know, definitely, but just be a little bit wary because uh, those usually are jobbers. So that means that they're just getting um, stock from, uh, um, that is, was not used basically by clothing manufacturers and that kind of thing most of the time. So, um, yeah, they're not quite as curated as maybe some of the smaller fabric stores. So just keep that in mind. And the same can be said for fabric.com. Um, you know, a lot of times you can be a little bit safer if there's like a designer that you're comfortable with. You know, like the, for instance, art gallery. They sell art gallery on there. Well, that's a fantastic jersey. So, you know, that kind of substrate. But just be a little wary of that. Uh, if you go into Target, say, um, I... I'm saying this because we're having this issue right now. And I bought my daughter a really nice pair of um, kind of the, the men's style PJs, but they were in a knit, so it was a top and a pair of shorts. And then also it came with a pair of capri pants. And she loves them to death. I'm not going to air dry my her pajamas. Like, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> so that rayon gets washed and dried. And it gets, um, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about, where it like sticks to itself. And it's not static. It's just like attaches to itself like Velcro and you're like pulling it away and then it pills really badly. I mean, that's just inexpensive, poor rayon jersey, basically. Um, which if you're buying pajamas from Target, that's to be expected. However, I have, um, there for a while, I had bought a whole bunch of discounted uh, jersey in a few different colors of rayon jersey and I made a few t-shirts out of it and the same thing happened. Um, it just pilled really, really badly. Uh, and I try not, I mean, even with some of my t-shirts, I try not to dry those. Um, but occasionally, you know, once I've had them for a while and I'm not as precious about them, I will go ahead and just dry them just because it's easier and takes up less space. Um, but it will definitely pill jerseys will um, pretty significantly. And it also depends on your, um, the beginning, um, quality is what I'm trying to say of the rayon. But there you have it. Bamboo again, beautiful to wear. Um, I just made that uh, Constellation hoodie by Love Notions in a merino tinsel blend um, and a sweatshirting. That's beautiful. Uh, I made that Sloan, Love Notions Sloan set with the Luna uh, loungewear shorts in a cotton bamboo uh, blend that was also beautiful. So you can definitely, like, yeah, it, it's, it's a beautiful, um, a beautiful fiber to work with. Okay, also while we're talking about knits, if you like heavier knits for leggings or for more structured, you know, like a knit dress or a blazer, Ponte obviously is a fantastic fiber to use, also, or a fantastic fabric to use. It's also really great if you've not had a lot of experience with knits because it's super, super stable. Ponte fabric, I only buy Ponte that is a rayon 
nylon spandex blend. I do not buy any Ponte that has any polyester in it whatsoever. Nylon helps with the durability. It makes it really, really durable. And actually, Joanne Fabrics has, or did have a line of um, rayon nylon um, spandex Ponte. That's the good stuff. Like, you really want to look in Ponte's for those things. I just, anything with the polyester in it, number one, it's super hot. Um, you know, even in the winter months, but then it will really pill badly, I find, um, in my experience. And it just doesn't feel as nice against the fingers. <laughs> so you do want to, um, you know, check the label on the end of the bolt or check the description of the fabric before you buy it online. Um, and definitely be careful. Rayon should not have static um, or very little static. So if you've got rayon, something that you think is rayon, and it's producing some static in your uh, dryer, it probably has polyester in it, just as a heads up. You can do the burn test. I have a video on the burn test. I'll pop a link up there. A uh, video on the burn test, but um, just be wary that, that sometimes other fibers can get in with rayon. So you just, especially if you're not really sure um, what you're buying. Okay, other, let's talk about wovens. So the most popular um, with rayon is rayon chalet. And that's this is my last printed rayon chalet that I've got in my stash. And I think I'm going to do a B6543 out of it, that wrap dress with the flutter sleeve in this pretty. This is an art gallery print. I bought it a couple years ago. It was a birthday gift from my husband, um, again, a couple years ago. But um, rayon chalet is just phenomenal. This, again, this is art gallery, so it's a little bit thicker. Uh, not all rayon chalet is created equally. A lot of times it can be really, really thin, and then it gets skewed really easily. So um, I would use, let's see, rayon chalet, anything that you need drape. So like the new Shimana's top that I just made, beautiful for a rayon. Um, yeah, anything you just want some extra drape for. Um, I would steer away, so I've got on the um, closet case patterns, uh, Cielo dress. I would steer away from rayon maybe for a dress of this. I think it would be a really cool top um, because it would drape. But I find, especially with the shift dress where you're kind of, you need the shape in the waist a little bit to make it like not look so um, like a column, uh, you'll lose that with um, a rayon chalet just because the drape is so beautiful. Now in the top it doesn't matter because it's kind of a cropped top so that's kind of a cool thing because you're getting your shaping at your waist where you have curve um, wherever further down on your body with whatever you're wearing. But this is fantastic for summer dresses. Um, just It just feels like you're not wearing anything. It's just so lovely to wear and big floaty dresses. Um, yeah, I love Rayon Chalet. <laughs> and it comes in some beautiful prints. Um, but yeah, just, just buy from rep reputable people, from brands that you know, um, either designers that you know are really good, art gallery, um, Chalet can be expensive, you know, it's like $16, $17 a yard, but, you know, there's other ones. I think I had mentioned I was looking at some Telio prints on Fabric.com. They've got pretty good Chalet um, or Rayon Poplin. So that, I don't have a sample of Rayon Poplin right now, but Rayon Poplin is just a little bit thicker than Rayon Chalet, and um, just like a cotton Poplin would be different from um, maybe like a cotton lawn, just a little bit heavier, a little bit more structure. If you're new to working with a woven rayon, rayon poplin's a great place to start. Chalet can definitely shift on you when you're cutting it out. It, you know, your bias can stretch really easily. Um, so you just, you need to be aware of that. But um, a lot of times the batiks, so the, um, oh, a dress I made back in March, I think I used two different rayon poplins. They were batiks, but it was a rayon poplin substrate there at the bottom. Um, those were much easier to work with because they're just a little bit thicker. Um, also on fabric.com, Telio has some wonderful uh, rayon poplins as well. So definitely have a look if that's something that you're interested in. But um, yeah, if you're starting off with rayon um, for the first time, I think a good rayon poplin, it just has a little bit more structure. It still has the drape, um, not as much as a chalet, but it still has the drape, um, but it's just a little easier to sew with. The other thing with rayon, when you're sewing with rayon, um, mostly with the wovens, maybe the knits too, don't cut anything out until you're ready to sew it. <laughs> rayon will grow on you just sitting there, I feel like. Um, so I never cut out rayon until I'm ready to cut it out, and then I will immediately go and stay stitch areas that need to be stay stitched. Necklines, um, you know, armholes, anything with a curve um, that you would normally stay stitch because rayon is just, it will just immediately grow. <laughs> Now, it's pretty easy, easy to um, get your shape back a little bit by kind of easing things in when you are um, doing your stay stitching. But yeah, just know that, yeah, don't let it sit overnight um, waiting to be sewn up because, yeah, you'll have issues. Ask me how I know. 
Especially if you have a skirt that's not, that has any kind of bias whatsoever, if it's like an A-line or a circle skirt, oh my gosh, you can get a side seam that's like six inches longer on one side, and um, not that it will completely change, but that's another thing. If you're making a dress with rayon, definitely let that sucker hang for a while, um, because it will grow. That hem will become uneven almost almost definitely, um, so you're going to want to trim and even that up before you do him the dress. Okay, another cut popular one that we're seeing kind of everywhere right now is Tinsel Twill, which is a rayon. And this is a heavier weight, kind of a bottom weight, so a little bit, it's easier to work with than a chalet. Um, and this is what I've got here. This is from um, Blackbird Fabrics. They almost always have some Tinsel Twill. Uh, so this would be something that you may use for a little bit more structured dress, pants, um, culottes, anything like that, uh, overalls if you wanted, but it is a twill, so just like a denim or a cotton twill, you can see in the, um, in the weave that it goes, you know, diagonally, um, which is the nature of a twill, that's what a twill is, but this is just a little bit heavier, and, um, most of the time I've seen it as tinsel twill, I don't know that I've ever seen, like, a viscose twill or a rayon twill necessarily, but it is gorgeous to work with, this makes beautiful skirts that are just a little heavier, but they just, they'll drape really beautifully, um, yeah, and so this is a good one to try too, it will grow just like your other rayons though, so right when you've cut it out, it's time to go stay stitch, um, and start sewing. Uh, don't handle it too much, <laughs> you know, the rayon too much after you have cut it out, you know, just bare bones as much as possible so that you get um, as little distortion as possible. Um, I don't do any precautions when I'm cutting it out though, you know, a lot of people will cut out single layer and maybe put, you know, like if you're cutting out a silk and put a layer of tissue paper down, then the fabric, then, then another layer of tissue paper or whatever, I don't do that. I will often cut on the folds, double layers. Um, maybe it'd be better if I'm on single layer, um, but unless I'm doing something with pattern matching, I, I cut my rayon double layer. Um, yeah, I just make sure everything is on grain before I get started, and uh, it's it's usually fine. So, <laughs> But yes, Tinsel Twill is great for your wider leg, drapier pants, um, the culottes, beautiful. Tinsel Twill is beautiful. Um, I don't know that I would make like a fitted pair of skinny pants necessarily out of a tinsel twill because I think they would just look baggy, like saggy drawers a little bit, you know, because they don't, it is drapier. But like a pair of, like I said, culottes, wide leg pants that anchor at the waist really nicely, skirts, um, even like slouchier overalls, um, that kind of thing would be very, very cute in a, a tinsel twill. So those are kind of the major things that you see um, of rayon. Uh, again, the bamboo, the tinsel, the modal, all of that um, kind of in the same family. I love sewing with it. I think it's fun. It is a little bit trickier. Um, if you are having issues with, especially like your rayon chalet, just spray starch the living daylights out of that. You can spray starch, um, just do uh, like a quilters, have a ton of spray starch options, you know, whatever your favorite is. Um, as you're ironing, you know, once you pulled it out of the dryer and you're ironing your yardage before cutting it out, just use some spray starch and you'll be shocked at how easy it is to handle, and then it just has to be washed when you're finished to wash that out, and you're usually pretty good to go. Uh, so that is definitely a trick, especially if you're using anything with bias binding. A lot of times that can be a real treat, <laughs> using bias binding. Sometimes I won't even, you know, necessarily starch the whole garment. Um, the Shimano's top that I made, I did spray starch the bias, the piece of bias um, tape that I was using just to make it much easier to work with. Um, a side note also about rayon, it frays like crazy. So um, you do want to be careful about trimming your seam allowances too short if you're doing any kind of grading or that kind of thing with rayon because they will just fray away and then you've washed a shirt and all of a sudden the bias bindings come off because you've clipped, you know, you've trimmed your um, seam allowance down too, too much. So definitely be wary of that, that it does um, fray. So either French seams or serging is definitely recommended in my opinion when it comes to rayon, uh, just to keep everything from going away, <laughs> from losing it all. Um, yeah, I think that that's about it that there is to say about rayon. I I love rayon. I love wearing it in the summer. Um, I do know that you have to be careful about where it's sourced, um, but it really is a fantastic fabric, fabric and is pretty affordable as well. Um, but this goes for any fabric. You've got to be careful how it's sourced, period. You know, even your natural cottons and your linens and definitely silks. Um, so anyway, just something to, to keep in mind when you're, you're shopping for anything, consuming anything. 
Okay, that is all I have for today. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get to those as soon as I can. I hope you guys will try out some rayon and discover what a lovely fiber it is to wear and, and just the lovely drape that it is. It's just a wonderful, a wonderful uh, fiber. All right, that's all I have for today. I will see you guys on Sunday for the final um, sew along for the B6358, 6538, the swimsuit, the Lisette swimsuit we're working on. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that'll be part four of that in the final one going up on Sunday. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you then. Bye.